Hello, everyone, and welcome to the penalt. Ooh, god damn it! Every time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cross Media Show, where we talk about everything to do with the entertainment industry, specifically TV shows and movies. Um, today we are talking about the legendary, the one, the only Justice League Snyder Cut. And god damn it, boys, I'm very excited for that. Uh, today I have with me Richie. Richie, how's That's it going? Me. It's it's good. It's going good. I mean, I'm I'm all kitted out. I mean, I'm wearing my uh, Greg Miller Batman v Superman was a good movie shirt. I, I got my flash true. hat on. I mean, it is true. It's very true. And I will die on that hill. But there's a lot of hills I'm going to die on. Oh, in this podcast, so as we can see, there are a lot of hills. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have Ryan with me as well. Ryan, how's it going? Uh, doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. How about yourself, Ruben? Uh, it's been a rough week for me. Uh, I started a new job. Well, to a second job. And then immediately quit the second job because it was just too much for me. Um, but other than that, it's pretty, pretty good. How about yourself? Doing good, doing good. Just enjoying the new consoles. You know how it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving that sleek ass PS5 on my desk right now. Second grade. Oh, yeah, I couldn't get one. I'm jealous. Oh yeah. Did you guys see the, um, <laughs> the, ah, fuck. I got to look it up. I also have with me Frank. Yo, are we What's recording? Up? Yes, we are recording. Oh my god. Hey, what's up? How's, How's it going, going, buddy? Good, good. Been playing Spider-Man on my brand new sleek PlayStation. I hate all of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how are you liking that? Uh, pretty good so far. Um, it's a, I mean, I, 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 I'm playing on a 60 FPS Spider-Man, which is the best Spider-Man way to play. But um, 30, like the fidelity mode just isn't working well for me. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Now, is that for Miles or is that for the remaster of for Spider-Man? Both. I've already platinum. Oh, Miles. for both. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going through the original. So before we get into the Snyder Cut, um, I'm going to read you a headline from adweek.com. Okay. As Xbox and PlayStation launch hardware, Philadelphia cream cheese gets in on the action. What? This PS5, the Philly Series 5 features five cream cheese bricks of power, baby. And I I found out about this today. It looks very weird. It's pretty much just like a uh, a thing to like bake a cheesecake in. And I shit you not, it looks freaking hilarious. I saw the commercial for it. They went all out, and I'm glad they did. Uh, I'm going to need a link to this. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, can you drop this in the chat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, please. You got that. I'll drop it in the chat right now. Hold on. So, oh, oh we're doing it right now. Yeah, I'll drop it in right now. Might as well, right? <laughs> I want to um, know about this cream cheese. This is the cream cheese podcast now. Yeah. Everyone get some bagels. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna make any comments because I'm I'm gonna get crucified on that too. This okay. is the this is the CCP now. Oh the my CCP? god! Yeah, the cream cheese podcast. That is that is amazing. I, I actually like I might actually uh, I might actually have some of that that, that looks yeah, good well they're it's limited because they do it's not it's limited they're selling out real quick so every day they do it at 12 o'clock oh. there we go I, I clicked the wrong channel that's okay every day they um send it out at 12 o'clock and you have to be the first ones to get there otherwise you're fucked and you will not be it's like actually five. getting a ps5 yeah <laughs> just set that on your on your uh entertainment stand and when people come over they're like yeah you got the new ps5 no it's cream cheese mm, it's cream cheese just cream cheese <laughs> um so let's get into it snyder cut let's hear how how excited we all are i people excited know frank let me let me let me ease it in all right <laughs> people know how excited i am for this movie four hours of ultimate greatness is going to be phenomenal i can't wait um it's gonna be like end game if end game was an extra hour so i'm gonna be in fucking heaven for this richie how do you feel about this so i've been on this this train ever since the release of the snyder cut you know vision came out when they started when zack snyder started saying hey this is what my original movie was gonna be it was gonna show dark seed dark side however you want to pronounce his name it's i pronounce dark it dark side sir 
All right. I, I pronounce it both ways. I, it's okay. It's okay. But it's wrong okay. though. No hate. No hate. But I it's I prefer the dark side just because it sounds okay. better. Okay. Um, and that we were going to see this. We were going to see the uh the black suit for Superman and everything. And it was just going to have that overall dark tone that I was expecting going into this movie when I went and saw the original two years ago. Yeah. And I'll say back then I did enjoy it, but I think I enjoyed it because I was on a date with my girlfriend at the time and it was our first date with her coming out here to visit me. So I think that's why I enjoyed the movie. But when it came out on Blu-ray and DVD, went and picked it up, watched it. And I was like, this is bad. This is really bad. So when Zack Snyder started treating, uh, like giving us all this whole, Oh, here's what my original visual was going to be. I was like, I need this movie. I, I, I need this movie. Um, and as more and more gets released, I'm just like, this movie needs to come out now. Like, I don't care if they release it in one hour increments, like over four weeks, or if they just do it all at release, I need it all. I I need this entire movie to be out so I can, uh, you know, brask in the glory of what is the Snyder cut. Sorry guys. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's coming soon. Richie, it's coming soon, and I'm. I, know, I'm I need it. I need, I need it. it now. Mm-hmm. We move on to Ryan. Ryan, what's your hype level for this? Oh, really? It's for okay, the room. Good. It is. God, since the um, we did the DC uh, fandom DC fandom the event. I've been real hyped on this movie this anytime all these trailers and things keep coming out little tidbits here and there it just looks good it just keeps getting better and better you keep hearing all these little things like oh this is going to be in it this is going to be in it i'm ready to sit down for four fucking hours and see whatever the hell Zack snyder wanted to make of this movie now i should remind you that it will be broken up into four episodes yeah. okay four it will. Hour episodes. all right it will be Yes, it's it's oh god, I can't. Which wait. that I don't know if I'm gonna watch it. In, I may watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna have to save it. it all to watch it in one long go. Oh no! Oh, am I gonna watch week, it week, week to week? week. You, you have I to watch will, it as a release. I will be watching yeah. it week to week, and then after yeah. it finishes, I will watch it in black and white, and then I will watch it in color. Oh, are they doing a noir version of the movie? I believe he said there is. I'm not sure. Okay. I can't confirm that. All right. That that would that would be. And the trailer. The black and white trailer was out? beautiful. I mean, the black and white trailer was just a regular trailer, which was I was kind of disappointed with. But I think it had like one or two extra scenes mm-hmm. in it. I couldn't really tell the difference, but I was just I was like, "This is black and white. It's beautiful." I the last film I think I watched in black and white was Logan, and I enjoyed the hell out of that. I've never seen a black and white movie. Logan in black and white was real cool. It's good. It's worth it. Definitely, definitely worth watching. Mm-hmm. Which leads me so, to yeah, no hype levels for the roof. Which leads me to Frank. Oh, hello. How are your hype levels for this movie? Um, you know, I'm curious. Uh, I don't like Snyder's films. They're okay. very on the nose, Jesus loving weird. Uh, especially like if you look at Man of Steel, where like he's talking about saving everybody with Jesus Christ in the background, mm-hmm. um, it, he get, he gets very weird with his with his takes on superheroes, and he gets very weird on his versions of these these graphic novels that he's obviously getting inspiration off of. Yeah. He it it honestly every time I see his takes on like what he thinks like something meant in a graphic novel, he couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> um and he sees himself as some kind of like oh well I'm the only one with the best take on this. It's like no dude, you got it all wrong. Um especially if you look at like Batman versus Superman is the biggest prime example of that. It's just like how do you take the Dark Knight Returns? And use that as your source material, and get it all completely wrong. What? How? And what? In what sense did he get that wrong? Well, one of the biggest things there is Batman kills somebody, like literally in the first ten minutes. 
Um, and then yeah. his his version of of what the Dark Knight Returns was was that well, Batman kills people in that comic. I'm like, no, Batman does not kill people in that comic. It's you can infer that he does, but it's not. It takes away the ending of the book if you do, which yeah. is we do not use guns. Guns are for the weak. We don't do that. We don't kill. And if you if he kills in the beginning of that book, or if he kills later on in that book, it takes away the whole moral standpoint of the ending of the book. Okay. Now, I get what you're saying. But I feel like the Batman that was introduced in Batman v Superman was a Batman that just got tired of shit. I, re- I feel like Ben Affleck as Batman took on... It's going to be a really hot take, but I think he was probably the best person to play Bruce Wayne and Batman at the same time. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Ben Affleck is a great Batman. He's not written as a great Batman. Okay, I see what you're saying. I'll respect it, but I I, I don't think that's true. I think he is written as a great Batman. Um, I feel like Zack Snyder did a really good job with justice league i mean dawn of justice i just feel like he was pressured to put in literally the the big three yeah i mean that movie did not have breathing room at all no not at all i i honestly think that um if they would have changed the title and i i will defend that this is a great movie to to the ends of the earth if they would have changed the title to Batman and Superman Dawn of Justice, I think it would have been recepted a lot better than Batman versus Superman because everyone okay, wanted to see the Dark Knight uh, Returns story. No, I wanted to see Batman kick Superman's ass. Well, yeah. Oh, I, I wanted, wanted to see the Dark Knight. Don't get me that wrong. I think if he just changed the title, but we still got the fight, I think it would have. I think it would have been uh, treated a lot better and recepted more. But it became that trend where everyone wants to hate on DC. No one likes the the tone that. DC's going with because I mean Zack Snyder's um cinematic universe I don't want to say like cinematic universe but the expanded universe yeah it it's a lot darker than what a lot of people were ready for yes in Nolan's trilogy which was the most recent of you know DC films other than what was it Green Lantern which had a more goofy tone to it but we didn't really talk about Green Lantern here yeah don't 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 get me wrong I'm gonna come back to that but in it's it's a take that you're not gonna really expect, but you're kind of gonna expect. Um, I think that you know, like I said, if the title would have just been changed from versus to and, and we still got the fight and everything, we still got the same plot, it would have been received a lot better because everyone was expecting, you know, Bruce and Clark to be going at it for almost the entire movie, not that little fifteen increment and the few scenes they got where it was just you know, Lex in the background pulling the strings, which we all knew was going to be a thing when they revealed that Jesse Eisenberg was going to be playing Lex, which I still think is a great Lex Luthor. Mm. I still, I still defend him. <laughs> I, I have a lot of bad takes. I know, but I think because he even says in the movie that my dad was the Lex behind Lex Corp. So that kind of proves that he isn't Lex Luthor, but Lex Jr. Unfortunately, which Unfortunately. I'm okay with because Lex Jr. was always kind of schizophrenic. And uh, the comics I did read where he appeared, he was schizophrenic. He was crazy. He was goofy. Jesse Eisenberg was perfect for that role. So that's why I I stand on that, you know, aspect of the movie. And I I see what you're pulling out right now. I I see it. I pull out a Batarang. I I love it and I need it. Nobody is a bigger Batman fan than I am. I don't know about that. Frank, I'm telling you, nobody's a bigger Batman fan than I. Don't I. Know. Have you seen what's behind <laughs> me? All these Batman statues. And How could I see I, if yeah, you don't have your camera time. on? I'll, 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 I was getting my camera ready, but I didn't know we were starting already. Oh, I mean, you can do that and then show me. Like, we'll we'll get back to you. Yeah, but um, what's with the battering? Uh, I was just gonna say, I feel like uh, I lost my train of thought, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled out a battering and just me. like um I lost my chance thought I like after... Shazam just pulls out the battering. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean great movie too. But oh, fantastic movie. I think Shazam was great. that 
this movie will become what Justice League really needed to be. That's my hope. With four hours, I really hope so. I'm a little upset and concerned that he brought back Jared Leto as Joker. I'm not a big fan of Jared Leto as Joker. I, he needed I, enough screen time for me to have a proper opinion on that. And if, we, I think if we would have gotten the... I think David Ayer said there's a hour and 30 minutes of pure footage of his Joker. I think we would have a little bit of a different like aspect, but I mean, also it's, it's Jared Leto. I liked his acting in some movies, hated it in some movies. So it's just, it's hit or miss for me. Honestly, if we could have cut him out of suicide squad in general, that would have been great for me. You know, well, and he he's was, not even the worst part of suicide squad. It, suicide Listen. squad is just a bad movie in general. Like the cut we got was bad. <laughs> I know no, that we, we I, I saw. For a good suicide squad now. No, no, we're not fighting for a good squ- Suicide Squad at all. No, no that movie <laughs> can't. Suicide people people hate on Suicide Squad, squad, squad but love Batman versus Superman. They're the same movies. No, shut your fucking oh, mouth. Whoa, 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 hell. Okay, hold on. I'm about to stop you right there. I'm suicide Squad both overly is... dark. Nope. Both do not even like look at source material the same way. Suicide Squad literally had. Killer Croc there for one scene and one scene only, and that was for him to dive underwater. Oh, Batman vs Superman had Mercy Graves there for like two scenes just to get blown up. Not to mention they had you know Jimmy Olsen there to die at the very beginning, which was bullshit. Well, I mean, Superman could have saved him. Really going to kill off Jimmy Olsen within the ten minutes of the movie? This is where I blame. Also, where it's like, hey, you know, Jimmy Olsen's younger brother, who also goes by Jimmy Olsen. It just excuses to like this, keep doing stuff like that. And this is where I blame Henry Cavill's Superman. Not Henry Cavill himself, but the character of Superman. I hate Superman with a passion. I think I, agree, Ruben. I think I Superman agree. is probably too powerful for his own good. And I'm really glad that this movie was able to kick him down a notch because you see him literally stand in the uh what was it the congress building or was it like a just a it was the, it was the hall um the congress court hall or whatever yeah yeah whatever the fuck it was uh the just standing building. there yeah the state building just standing there while everybody is literally about to be blown up you're telling well, me you could, your supersonic hearing couldn't tell you that there was a bomb it was it was behind lead remember he can't do anything you're telling me lead. you didn't have super speed to fucking save everybody he doesn't have spider sense no, he doesn't. No, have no, just playing. <laughs> but you're telling me, and this goes all back I'm to- saying is, he could have done. Superman is a hard character to pull off because there's so many things that you could have done. Even in Man of Steel, you're telling me he couldn't have stopped for two seconds to save everybody in those buildings. Well, and here, here's where I'm going to come into play. It goes back to the scene with uh, where they're on the highway in Man of Steel, and it's the tornado, and it. Um, Jonathan Kent, played by the wonderful Kevin Costner, stops him. He saw that Clark was going to go save him, but he stopped him. And it's kind of this realization that when Jonathan Kent dies, it just proves that Clark can't save any everyone. But he can. He serves, we can. No, he can. <laughs> and I mean, the- yes, in, in normal circumstances, Jonathan usually dies from like a heart attack or whatnot. Yeah. And I think the twister was a, a bullshit excuse. But it also adds to he didn't want to be revealed to everyone yet because they did the whole thing of the world wasn't ready for him. And remember it's that part, true. Remember that part in the movie where he, where John and Kent goes up to a young Clark Kent and goes, don't save anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't save anybody. Don't save anybody. Don't anybody. Superman, don't have, save anybody. He didn't want Clark to have a, a bad childhood. Fuck his childhood. He's a Kryptonian. Well, It'll be fine. Know. He didn't want to have Clark to have a bad childhood. What bad childhood? He can't be a. F- he's a he force to be reckoned with. <laughs> he's, he's, he he he's was invincible. getting his ass beat and everything, and he he could have fought back, but it just adds more to the character. Because Superman is a little bitch. That's why. Yeah. No, this, because Superman would have straight murdered those kids right, if he threw because a Because he's a little bitch. Superman got literally. Let let let's be real here. This the Superman that we got is sad all the time. He's unhopeful. He has no hope for him, like whatsoever. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say Christian Bale's Batman? 
Well, Christian Bale's because Batman's oh, Batman's, Batman's sad. What here's the thing? That's Batman Batman's character. Batman yeah. is vengeance. He is constantly yes, thinking about Christian like his parents, Bale, and Batman that's his motivation. So bad. Literally, Christian Bale's Clark's, Batman is not bad at all. Clark's hope motivation throughout every comic is that he is the denizen of hope. He is what stands between you and the person who you can't fight. And it's like he, just seeing him be unhopeful and sad all the time is like this isn't Superman. This is Batman. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll respect your opinion while I trash on another opinion really quickly. Okay. Go right ahead. Christian Bale's Batman is absolutely awful. And here's right. the thing: I'm it's not to say I hate Christian Bale because I actually do appreciate Christian Bale as an actor. I love him in multiple roles, which goes with my love hate relationship with Christopher Nolan. In the first movie. He was he was good. He was he was I enjoyed his character. In the second movie, it was kind of like eh, I'm not really feeling this. And the third movie, it's just unbearable. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. And it's even after everyone finds out that standing around him that oh hey it's Bruce fucking Wayne, he still talks in the shitty Batman. Yeah. That's it's. I'll it's give you the bullshit. Batman voice. Batman voice is terrible. But that's the bad Bale. voice <laughs> made me want to drive nails into my ears. I hated it so much. We shit on Bane's voice, but Christian Bale's voice is so much worse. Yeah, half I mean, the time I had to turn the subtitles on just to hear what he fucking says. I know Ruben's fucking having oh, a I field day. Oh, Ruben's ready to Ruben. kill me, and I already said Ruben, I'm Ruben, gonna Ruben's be ready to fucking blow up. But but I, I agree with the Batman voice. voice. The Batman voice just gets continually worse. In dark, in the Batman Begins, it was great. Because it worked, exactly. you can hear Thank it. You. Thank Bad, you. Dark Knight, it got a little bit worse, but it was still noticeable. Rises, it's just full on gravel. It's it's rocks. And well, this Rises is throat. a bad movie, so a difference. No, Rises is a bad movie, so we don't talk about Rise anyway. So I, I I I will I will say that Rises is worse. It's the ba- it's the worst one out of the trilogy. But I honestly like Begins more, and I will say that I watched the Nolan trilogy just for the villains. I didn't like the um the the portrayal of Batman in the movies. I'll you didn't like honest, Michael Caine? I liked Michael Caine. Michael Caine and I like Gary Oldman. But I did not. It, Christian Bale's Batman just didn't do it for me. And then the casting change for Rachel, where it was Katie Holmes, yeah, and then yeah. it was, um, oh shit. Maggie Gyllenhaal. We don't Maggie know. Gyllenhaal, thank you. Yeah. It was just, like, that, that. that was the turn off for me. And, it, and when I saw the movie, I didn't even realize that's, it, that's who that was supposed to be. And then they killed her, and I was like, well, what the fuck was the point of that? And then they did my boy Two Face dirty. I was like, well, this is fucking stupid. Hmm. I was like, why why do we gotta kill off Harvey Dent? Give him time to shine. No, well, you had to kill off no, Harvey Dent I, to I, make I, Batman the monster. I will, I will tell you I this. really liked the version of Two Face we got in those movies. I thought yeah, I thought, I thought. Harvey Dent portrayal was great. And I thought Aaron Eckhart was a fantastic Harvey Dent. And I didn't realize that we were getting Two Face in the movie until I went and saw the movie. I thought that was a great reveal. Yeah, I thought and that it all played out perfectly into what that Batman he was uh, portraying had to do. It, it was, like Ruben said, turning Batman into the monster that the city needed him to be at that moment. And it, I do like the the whole, like, they try to go with the realistic portrayal, where it shows the wear and tear they do to the body with um, trying to be that kind of vigilante. I mean, Bruce had been Batman for what almost a year between the gap between Begins and um, the Dark Knight. If I recall correctly, it was pretty and much then, straight I, after. Was yeah, it, I thought it was like a year. I don't Cause I know, no, because wasn't the after. ending a cord? Was him getting the yeah. cord? Yeah. Okay. I'll check. Um. Because yeah, they they talk about uh you know, the Joker and they give him the calling card. They're like, Oh, this is his calling card. And it's like, Oh, well that's definitely who the villain's going to be. But Six I to nine was... months is the time period. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, close to a year. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it does do a lot of wear and tear on the body, but like when I go to see a comic book movie, I want it to be over the top. I want it to be goofy as shit or dark as shit with and brutal. Like I want there to be unrealistic shit that happens. I mean, the man literally had his half of his face burned off. How, how much? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the most like comic it's book gruesome. thing to happen. Well, here, here I I'm mean, gonna, yeah, gonna... because it was supposed to be realistic. I don't want a realistic. If I wanted oh. a Batman movie, I wanted a comic book movie, and that's why I like uh, Batman's portrayal. 
So next thing you're going to tell me is that Heath Ledger wasn't a great Joker. I love his Joker. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I love his Joker. And that's why I said I watch it for the villains. Okay. All right. I think, but people try to you're pull the argument there, that, uh, he's the best Joker. I have to separate my Jokers. Like Jack, no, Nicholson, he is the best Jack Joker. Nicholson, uh, Jack Nicholson was a great Joker for the whole like gangster mobster type aspect, right? Yeah. Where the Heath Ledger Joker we got was more of an anarchist and just kind of crazy. Yeah, but again, that's what Joker is. He is right. Yeah. I get that, but I have to. When I think of my Jokers, I have to separate them because, like, Mark Hamill's the best animated Joker. I think that um, Heath Ledger is the best Joker for the the type of Joker we got, and then Jack Nicholson's the best type of mobster. And when they did the whole gangster version of Jared Leto, I was like, ah, I don't really like the where this is going. I didn't care for the look. If they would have gotten rid of the face tattoos and the grills, I think his look could have pulled off perfectly That's because really cool. it was going with that New Fifty Two look. Yeah, but it was really bad. Yeah, it's not, it's they, not great. I have to go going to Joker around here somewhere. If they were going to do New 52 Joker, they should have done the one where he rips off his own fucking face. And I thought that's what we were going to get. I thought we were going to get the death in the family, uh, or the death of the family Joker with the Suicide Squad because part yeah. of his face in one of the trailers is burnt and it looks like he's about yeah. to yeah. Batman. That Joker. And they cut that scene. So I'm kind of pissed off. I don't know. It that would have been amazing. That was... That is still well, my favorite look for the Joker. We're getting Jared Little back in, unfortunately, but it's going to be a new look. I think I think we'll get a revive. I think this will be his redeeming moment. If if there is any redeeming moment for his Joker, I think it will be in the Snyder cut, especially because Zack Snyder knows what he's doing with his characters and what he wants his universe to be. Let's hope. Right. You know, I speaking on the Dark Knight. I brought some some visual aids here. So you guys can see. Right. Unfortunately, oh, wonderful. I have that comic as well. Able to see him. Um, hey, but before you do big... that, I have one question for you. What's up, Frank? Do you bleed? You, I, I guess I will. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I, I guess I, I will. I think we all do. We're human, right? Um, I don't so know this, about that. This, this book right here. Don't talk for me. If you watch The Dark Knight, you have <laughs> to read this book. The Long Halloween. Oh, right. I love the Hall- long Halloween. If you if if you watch the Dark Knight, you will realize that a lot of this book is in there, including the Harvey Dent stuff. A lot of the Harvey Dent stuff is because of this book. I believe okay. even like the 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 night is darkest before the night, uh, the, something like that is in this book. Like a lot of the stuff is in this book, right? Okay. So, like Nolan read this book and took Harvey's parts and got it right because of that okay. and that's I, why like harvey said, is very well written in, in in the dark knight and there that's why there's a really stark contrast between this book here when you read this book and you watch the dark knight like the uh batman versus knight superman oh. no no batman versus superman when you read this book and read and watch batman versus superman there's a very stark dis- difference between this guy this guy and what we got on the screen because the greatest batman ever the greatest Batman ever. Look at this Batman. Like, look at his face. Like, it's so well done. Look, look at him. Look at that. It is the best version of Batman. The best version. I do of like the Dark Knight Returns, and I think it's one of the you know best Batman stories. But Christian or not Christian Bale, Ben Affleck does a fantastic job, and I think he is honestly the best combination of both Bruce Wayne and Batman. This is Where true. yeah, previous movies we haven't gotten. We got a really sh- shitty Bruce, either a really shitty Bruce Wayne or a really shitty Batman. And this is like with my argument with Spider Man. Like, you know, Tom Holland is the best between both. Whoa, where whoa, it's like a crazy. Tom so okay, Maguire is the best Spider Man that has ever lived, and there will no be nobody that tops him. But we're not here to talk about Spider Man. No, we're not it's here not to talk about pizza time. It's, exactly. It's always pizza time. But anyways, pizza time. <laughs> um. With Ben Affleck, we get that best combination. We get the, you know, the gruff side of, you know, Batman, of the brute, um, the brute he really is. Like, he just whoops everyone's ass in that movie. And the warehouse scene is the best example. Oh, my God. Oh, no, it's the best Batman fight scene. Don't it's, get me wrong. It's, it's the only Batman fight scene. Let's there's, be real. There's, <laughs> there's strokes of genius in that movie, which makes me so sad of the the whoever wrote and wrote that movie is just like what are you guys doing? In fact, I think I remember who wrote that movie. But with 
you know, previous Batmans, we haven't gotten a great combination. Like, Michael Keaton, I think, was a great Bruce Wayne. Not a really good Batman. But he was also more of, like, that stiff type, like, you know, yeah. just walking yeah. around. I mean, that was, like, he was, that was the suit. Yeah, it was the suit. I mean, and for that time, Batman was supposed to be a detective. He wasn't supposed to be the martial artist yeah. he was. And is. I mean, yeah, he's always had the capabilities of fighting, but it's never been, you know, great. So for me, my portrayal of like who I enjoy as Batman, it goes Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton. I'll even throw Val Kilmer in there. Christian Bale, George Clooney. Oh my God. You're putting have, Val Kilmer. I have not Val Kilmer as Batman because he was my first, it was my first Batman movie. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll allow so that. I, and it's okay. the nostalgia. I put it on. It's a guilty pleasure movie. Okay. I'll put it on every once in a while. All right. But it's Ooh. one of those things where it's just like, I, I can't get past Christian Bale's Batman. And I love Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. But the thing is, Christian Bale's Batman was more of a detective than literally yeah. everybody else. He was, more, he was more detective than actual it, I liked, arts. Brew. I like if it wasn't for the voice. I think the voice is what kills it for me. Where I is she? Come on. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Where is yeah. she? And Batman, Where like, is she? Bruce, Where is she? Bruce is kind of like a voice changer. But none of them really do. Like, they, they just deepen their voice a little bit. They don't have to go down here. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Well, well, Batman never really... In, in every other media, Batman, ne- like, for some reason, I don't know why we still do the even the gravelly voice or anything. Because everybody in the movies, like the movie media, all of a sudden thinks that Batman has to have a really deep voice or a modulated voice. Where in like every other media, he's just talked like a normal person. Exactly. I would say the reason why is probably because it's different in the in the movie live action movies. Just because for the majority part, you hear Bruce Wayne like doing. A lot of people hear Bruce Wayne's voice in the movies. You have yeah. um, Gary Oldman uh, bumping into, God damn it, Commissioner Gordon bumping into Bruce Wayne uh, in Dark Knight when he, the, the hospital scene where he's trying to like that. So if I hear Bruce Wayne's voice and then a couple hours after that, I hear Batman talking i'm gonna be like wait a minute i'm pretty sure that's batman but but if you think about it also like commissioner gordon and batman have always had that thing to where why wouldn't he he have figured it out beforehand there's also that thing of like commissioner gordon doesn't even care like Uh, yeah he doesn't want to know exactly he doesn't want to know because if he knows then he's gonna have to arrest him exactly and i think honestly plausible deniability the best person to ever voice Batman because he just got it right has always been Kevin Conroy to me. Yeah, yeah but again, it's that. different. It, it's yeah. kind it's of hard animated. to do it. Yeah. But if you if you listen to when Bruce Wayne talks and when Batman talks for Kevin Conroy's uh, The Animated Series, there is a little bit of a pon- uh, tone difference as in Bruce Wayne's pitch is a little more up here, you know, is and then Batman's down here. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Like he just he adds more bass to his voice instead of getting the whole graveliness. So I think it's it all comes down to the tone. Yeah. And even when uh Ben Affleck talks, like, yeah, he still has the gravelly voice, but he just makes it a little deeper than going full out to where he's screaming the entire time. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. The the voice for 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 that character is it's just it, I don't understand why they would go that direction for for Christian Bale, but Christian Bale still did an insane work as Bruce Wayne. He might not have been that, the best Batman, but he his Bruce Wayne was insanely great. His, oh, his no, Bruce I think Wayne it's was the great. I think his Bruce Wayne was great because he had the he had the Playboy. He had that, like, I mean, Christian Bale's a handsome man. You put he, in he's that, a very handsome man. <laughs> you put in that Patrick Bateman feel to it. You know what I mean? Where it's just like he, ha- yeah. he obviously leads a double life, but you can you can't tell if it's true or not because it's he the way he acts as Bruce Wayne. I guess he is. He is my favorite Bruce Wayne. Right, you're gonna have to put your mic a little closer to you. It's kind of hard to hear. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Hello. There we go. Hello. 
He is he is so, my absolute favorite Bruce Wayne. Yeah. He's great Bruce Absolutely. Wayne. Uh, yeah, for, for, for a real long ben minute. <laughs> yes. Um, because so, Ben Affleck is the best Batman. I think yeah. he's the best combo. I, honestly, yeah. he's the best combo. I don't think he's had enough time as Bruce Wayne to call him the best. Yeah, that's Bruce the thing. Wayne. I have not been able to see his Bruce. Yeah, we've had we had him interact with he... Alfred, and that's really kind of about it. We had, the, we had him interact with Alfred. We had him uh, with the gala where he dances with Diana. We had him at the party with um, him, Clark, Luther, and Diana. And, I mean, even the funeral scene at the end of uh, Batman v Superman, like, you just see the humanity in him restored. Because he was this broken man at the beginning of the movie. Like, he was broken. He didn't, like, he gave up on what his original vision for Batman was supposed to be. And then he says his quote, I failed I failed him when he was alive. I can't fail him in death. Yeah. To me, that hit hard. Because it shows that this guy that he barely really knew, but had a lot of respect for after he put his hatred aside for him, that, hey, maybe this wasn't a bad thing. Maybe I shouldn't be the person I was, and I need to be better. Yeah. But keep in mind, we always we always treat Bruce Wayne and Batman as two separate people. Bruce Wayne right. is the is the persona, not Batman. Batman is the person. Like uh, yeah, Bruce Wayne is the mask. Bruce Wayne is the mask, and he always will be the mask. And throughout Batman versus Superman, you see Batman. You don't see Bruce Wayne ver- like rarely, mainly because everybody he interacts with already knows his identity. Or knows that some somewhat there's something else there. Right. No. By the time he talks to Lex in the galley, he already knows that Batman is Bruce Wayne. That's just yeah. A and I mean, Lex Lex has known it for months at that point, right? Yeah. And then Superman already knows who Batman is, like off the get go. Well, and here's something they never really touch on, but they 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 kind of do, but they don't at the same time. Is when we see Bruce in, at the beginning of the movie, and it's the fight in Metropolis against Zod and Superman. Mm-hmm. How long has he had not been Batman? Because he gave up Batman for a while. Yeah. And then after that fight, he came back. So I'm guessing he gave up being Bruce or being Batman when whichever Robin died. I think Zach confirmed it was Dick in the movie. That was his suit. It wasn't Jason's suit or Tim's. I think it was. He said that it was um, Dick Grayson's suit. So Dick is dead to. No, I thought universe. he confirmed it was Jason Todd. I thought they confirmed it. They they said it was Todd at first, and then they confirmed way later. Like this is the shit that I don't like about Snyder stuff. It's that he gets so many second chances to retcon stuff that he fucks up, which is like, oh well, I like we screwed up Justice League. Let's give him let's give a bunch of reshoots and another another cut. Oh, now it's Dick Grayson instead of Jason Again, Todd. To be confirmed, it wasn't a bunch of reshoots. It was four minutes of reshoots. It was four minutes of uh, added film. Uh, so, uh, sorry, new footage, new footage. That's a lot of money for just four minutes. Exactly. Well, you've got to pay people, That's a lot man. of money for four you minutes. Pay the pay version people. we got in theaters was 90% reshoots. When Zack stepped down and uh, Joss came in, he reshot almost the entire film. Most of that stuff was in the trailer, though. Most of that if you look at the, the trailer, if you look at the original trailer, the one we got at Comic Con, and then the second trailer, a lot of shit changed. Well, coloring, yeah, but for the no, most part, they were the same trailers. So if you go itself. back and watch them, they're very, very similar. I'm telling I mean, you, like footage and then keep itself, in, like, and then keep in I, mind too, like it's the same shit that happened with Batman vs Superman. It's just like, oh. Well, uh, we, apparently they didn't have enough time to show everything from Batman vs Superman. If you watch the original Batman vs Superman cut, it tells you nothing. That movie yes, is I'm all sorry. over the place. So we can't confirm that it actually is Dick Grayson. Yeah, now it is. That was very yeah. recent, though, that they confirmed that. Yeah, originally yeah. it was supposed to be Jason, which I was excited because I was like, "Yes, we're gonna get the Red Hood. Jason's my favorite Robin." But yeah. we can't get Red Hood. Why would we get Red Hood Red if Hood Batman kills people? Well, we can. Uh, Red Hood because it didn't What's kill the point? <laughs> What's the point of well, he's, Red Hood if Batman kills people? Okay. The Bruce Wayne we get is a very broken Bruce. Yeah. And this goes back to the um uh, my thing with Christian Bales uh in the Nolan trilogy. He's the one that really started establishing the whole 
Batman doesn't kill people. If you look at a lot of the other comics, he does kill people in a lot of the earlier comics. Batman hasn't killed people for a very long time. And, and they stopped it. Like I said, they, they did it in the original. Like, like 20 years bef- like before the 80s, at least. Uh, if he, you read the comics... In the, in the 90s. In the 90s, there's, there's a few storylines where Batman does kill people. Uh, mainline but, stories, no. I think we're getting side, side stories yeah, are a little different. Yeah, we're getting sidetracked. Yeah, multiverses getting side-tracked are different. Later. But I like I like the portrayal we got as Bruce. I'm not gonna lie. I got, I you're right that we do see Batman for most of Batman v Superman, and I think that's why I enjoy it because Bruce Wayne is the mask. Batman is the real person. Batman is, you know, who Bruce is. Yeah. And. We, I the scene that really impacts is like when he's on the phone with the guy, uh, who's in Wayne Tower in Metropolis, and he watches the building collapse as he's holding the little girl and everything. That just shows like he's pissed. He just lost another person he considered family, and he's he's pissed. He wants to take on Superman. Superman could destroy the Earth if he wanted to, or be a dictatorship. Hence, you know, the injustice storyline. He's a coward. But like that that is that really what breaks Bruce there? I mean, from all the extra lore that we get from Snyder, it's like, oh well he's divorced by Selena Kyle and like di- now it's Dick Grayson who's dead. I haven't even seen it's anything like, on Selena Kyle. Like yeah, I, I, I think he's either. been like a few years divorced from Selena Kyle at this point now. Like they're like it's that stuff. It's like okay, wh- you're adding more stuff to like cover your ass of the stuff that you've messed up, obviously. And I don't get why he gets a pass on that just because he has a take on 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 Batman that's totally different from every other like media, and, and even Superman. Like, who who would dare make a Superman movie dark and gritty? Constantly, people like Superman's the, the whole reason Superman and Superman, his parents telling him, Hey, don't save anybody, you don't, des- they don't deserve it, you don't owe anything to anybody, and then literally killing off Zod, like killing him, snapping his neck. You know what I mean? Have you ever seen Snyder's yeah. direction for that, that part, by the way? He literally yeah. just goes, Snap his neck, just snap it, like, bro, yeah. it's Superman. So, let me ask you a question. Okay. There is a reason why um, the most recent uh, Superman movie that wasn't Man of Steel, I forgot what it's called. Superman Returns. Superman Returns was a flop. Because uh, Superman is too perfect of a character. Mm -hmm. You gotta have... Go go ahead, Frank. Oh, sorry. I think... No, there's there's ways to write Superman not be a campy douchebag. (laughs) You're right. There is ways to write Superman as a not can't be douchebag, but like it's not interesting because Superman is not perfect, but he's perfect in the in the world's eyes. He's the perfect human, not the perfect human being, but he's the perfect, perfect hero. the perfect hero. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you kind of need something to kick him down a notch in order for people to like him. And in order well, for people to like the movie, but people don't like the Superman. A lot of people don't like the Superman. I I, I thought Man liked... of Steel was a pretty good. Well, well did well, did well. Favorite. But the yes. Superman is very. He doesn't do anything Superman related. He got very yeah. dark in Batman vs Superman. I will say that. Yeah, in the sense like it was like Ew. you can save anybody. Back to the whole neck snapping thing. You can tell on the look of Clark's face, he doesn't want to snap Zod's neck. The only reason he does it is to save that family that Zod's about to kill with his eye beams. And then I he mean, even screams at the after he snaps his neck. Yeah, like when you he write a character into that. an ultimatum, of course that's going to be their only option. But you're writing that character into an ultimatum. I mean, you write Batman into an ultimatum, they're just like, well, if you don't kill Joker right now, the Batcave's going to blow up Jason Todd, Barbara, Dick and Tim are going to die, including Alfred. It's like, of course you're going to, Batman might actually snap someone's neck, but it's like, you don't, why write, write a character like that into an ultimatum that well, your only choice is to do that. I think under the red hood did it perfectly for that ultimatum for, um, Batman's character, because mm-hmm. at the end he gets the ultimatum. He's like, if you don't kill him, I will. Yeah. 
and he even throws the gun back to Jason. He says, I can't do it. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go down that road. It's too, too easy. Too easy. I will never come back from it. And that's the thing. It's just like, well, this Batman gets a pass because he killed what? 30 plus people in one movie and then he killed he accidentally kills Superman has a he of heart and never actually, a good guy like pulls the trigger on people like he does stab one guy he does give a few people head trauma and the car blowing up what? wasn't actually his doing he runs he shoots somebody he shoots a car with a minigun and it blows up listen you got to do what you got to do all right he shoots a car with him. He, there's the Gotham Batplane scene gonna, hey, where he just AC 130s a bunch of people on the way. Gotham isn't going to clean itself up. <laughs> that that part was actually Alfred. Right. Alfred okay. <laughs> Alfred's complicit too. Alfred's murdering people too. But again, the part with the Alfred's Batmobile and the minigun. The part with the Bat- Alfred Batmobile and the minigun. Badass back in the day. Well, I know. Yeah, he's SAS. He's SAS. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. Wasn't Alfred a fucking like super soldier but, like, back in the day? Like Batman, Batman it, shooting Alfred people with his Brent. Batmobile and blowing up cars <laughs> isn't Batman killing people? Or what about the part where he literally shoots KG Beast's gas tank and blows him up? That's killing people. What did I just say? You he did that to save Martha because he he promised Clark he would get Martha back. He found a way and to do it without. That's... He didn't in the comic. KGB was in that movie. He just caused the explosion that killed him. Okay, so if I if if I cut the, if I accidentally cut a rope somewhere and somebody falls down off like a scaffolding, I didn't technically kill them. I didn't know they were there. No. It, it, that's not that's not how that get works. Off murder, get off murder, scot free. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's easy. Liability right there, man. Murder is murder. You get off scot free. <laughs> Batman right. straight up murders some people in this book. And, and maybe he should. Story. Maybe he should. All some right. people think I, that's that's where I think the disconnect is for some people. Some people just don't know that Batman is supposed to be uncompromising in that moral. Because you take that away, you become as as bad as the people that killed your parents. Then you're not you Batman. Be I'd be right. And even even Bruce Wayne knows that. Bruce Wayne has always known that if he becomes as bad as the criminals that he puts away, then he should not be Batman. And it, it's been done before. Look at Injustice. Look at the way yeah, Injustice. When he- like when he snaps and Joker's neck in that in that alternate he, thing, he, he stops turns, becoming he Batman. Turns in. Yeah, yeah, he turns himself done. in. He pulls up with yeah. Joker's body falling out, and I had to make this argument to my friend a few weeks ago, and he was like, "No, that wasn't canon." I was like, "It's in the actual comic. I think it was in the Injustice Year Three issue number 13. Yeah, it's technically it's not real. It's it's not what really happens, but it's an idea of it's just the idea of that. That yeah, okay. if Batman were to go that far, this is what he would do. And that it and that is one hundred percent true. Batman is uncompromising in his morals. That's why he's. That's why everybody doesn't necessarily like him for that reason because he just does not compromise in anything that he does. And the, as soon as he compromises, he loses who he is as a person, and he loses that big moral st- uh, like standstill that he has about his parents. Because his parents would be just as disappointed in him as the people like as 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 anything. Okay, I'll give I'll give you that. I'll give you that one, and I'll I'll say that one. I I'm wrong in that opinion, and I'll I'll give you that one. I just what was I? Where was I going with this? Yeah, I lost my train of thought. The fuck. Yeah, okay. I, I I'm hopeful that the new Snyder cut addresses that Bat that Batman has done some wrong, and that he's working on not doing it because he obviously doesn't kill anybody in that movie. Which is why and, I, and, I mean, it so his much. pep talk to Barry uh, when he says, "If you can save a person, just one person, then you'll know you're doing your job right." Wait, whoa, whoa, are we quoting the regular Justice League? Yeah, I think that's the only part of the movie I actually that, that, that like movie doesn't count. Yeah. That movie doesn't count anymore, guys. That's it. Okay, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but at one point it was the. Just- Take it out of your mind. Throw right, it out. We don't, it we don't talk count. about the original. I, I did right? actually throw my DVD copy of that movie away. I, I actually chucked it out my window the other day. Good. You should have. I'm, I'm glad I'm, you did. Off the topic of Batman, what did everybody here think of like their version of Barry Allen? I would have liked for him to be a little more serious instead mm. of... Like, I, I get that like, Barry Allen is a clown, but like he knows... He knows when it's the time to be a clown and when at the time it's not. It was too much. And at this point, he yeah. isn't the Flash. Yeah, this like is he, true. Because he did, yeah. he doesn't actually get the inspiration for the name the Flash until the Crisis yeah. on Infinite Earth thing, which right. was 
amazing in my opinion and i actually popped out of my seat and i was just like screaming at my tv i was like holy fucking shit we're actually getting this yeah and i'm excited for flashpoint and like i said flash is my favorite dc character so i didn't like when they were doing the footage in uh, batman v superman and uh, diana's going through like oh here's cyborg here's aquaman here's barry i didn't like the look they gave barry he looked homeless. Oh, the homeless? Yeah. Yeah, he <laughs> looked homeless. It didn't yeah. feel right for me. But I like the look that we saw for the nightmare scene where he's coming out of the portal and he's like, hey, you were right not to trust him. Yeah. And I think that also adds to my argument with Bruce Wayne about like why we see Batman more than we see Bruce. Because this is a Batman movie. It, it is about this is our introduction to Batman for this universe. Correct. Th- and we don't I get the classic. Have it any other way. Like him, you know, training to do all this stuff. We got his little montage at the beginning of his parents being gunned down. We got the man bat thing, which was creepy as shit when I saw it in theaters because I wasn't ready for it. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I honestly don't know at this point. Like it's. It's brutal, like what Zack Snyder's vision is, and I'm all for it. Zack Snyder's not pulling any punches with what he thinks should be in this universe. Now, with that being said, what do we want to... We have two extra hours of movie now that we need to figure out what's going to fill. What do we, as this There's collective be a dark podcast, want to see? Side origin. There's got to be an hour just dedicated to Darkseid in the Omega world. I don't know. That's where you think it's going to be. I don't know. If they, I, I, don't I think, think they're they going to go in yet. with no I, introduction. Well, because I think what this this four hour cut's going to be is what Zack Snyder's trilogy was going to be, or his two movies was going to be. Oh, he still has two movies. Yeah. Is he still doing his two movies? Well, I mean, I don't. I think they canceled that. No, I'm pretty sure they didn't cancel it. He still has two movies after this. What? Well, I thought when he got fired, if this does good, if this does well. I yeah. think that they're going to give him the two movies. Because I think an hour of it's going to be like building up what the mother boxes are, what that should be. And like Darkseid and Stephen Wolf, their whole thing, the war um, that we get a glimpse of in um, uh, the bullshit Justice League. Yes, I said Justice League because that's what that movie is. Um <laughs> I think that's what a lot of them or um, maybe one of the hour increments is going to be. And then the second hour is going to end with them reviving Superman. And him, you know, waking up, that's going to be that's where that cuts. I think that possibly Darkseid is going to take control over Superman at some point and he's going to break free. At a, At one point. When I orig- when this movie was originally coming out, I thought Darkseid was going to take control over Superman and kill Alfred at one point because he's under the control of um, Darkseid and the Omega. Yeah. Well, we'll say this too. Um, as and I'm not I'm not defending anything that Joss did during this movie, but at you have to also look at how you come into this movie. Like you come into this movie. From what, from what it was told on set, the, it was already a mess. Like getting everything ready to go and everything. You bring Joss in, who has a pedigree to bring all these superheroes together in a very concise and ni- nice looking film. Well, Avengers. Voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But he, he how do you a... make Justice League? Justice League is literally just Avengers. But like Marvel MCU condensed, you know yeah. What I mean, we're condensing we're condensing Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, and everybody else into one film, and you bring Joss on because you know he can make a movie like that. But you also telling Joss, hey, sorry, we don't have the five films for you to uh, build lore on, but you have to condense this into one film, into a two hour and thirty minute film. Please do that for us. And it, it wasn't even two hours. It was only like an hour and 47 minutes. Well, I mean. For the original cut. Yeah, where we'll, we'll give it to him as two hours. We'll give it two hours. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's one thing I like about Zach. His storytelling is great, but when he tries to condense it all into a two-hour film, it doesn't work. He doesn't. 
Like if he would have said, Hey, I'm releasing this four hour cut in theaters with no breaks in between, I'd have been all for it. And not a lot of people will be. I, I know. And a lot of people won't. Like the, the, the first thing with Avengers, uh, my Endgame. father said with like Endgame was it's a three hour film. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sit through a film for three hours. God, I had to train myself. I, I sat I had to go through that movie for like a good my bladder for that. I sat through that movie four times. Yeah, I mean we can, it but not everybody same. will. No, you know what I mean, and then keep in mind, I I really do think that the comic book listener, like the comic book readers, and and like straight up like the people who consume just that media, are a very small amount of people who are going to go see these movies. Correct. True. You know what I mean? It's not. It, believe it or not, we do not outplay the people who are just going to go see a film. To go see a film. Yeah. And that's where I feel is the big disconnect between these movies. They're not meant... These, these Snyder movies and, and Justice Leagues and all that are not meant for us. There's little tidbits for us, but it's, it's really meant for the big box office media who want to go see a spectacle, who want to go see Batman kill somebody because they're so sick of seeing Batman not kill somebody or see Superman kill somebody because they want to see Superman flex his powers. And right. It's 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 a different movie for comic book goers than it is for people who just just want to see the next big explosion Michael Bay type movie. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. And I'll I'll be honest, I didn't start reading DC comics until I was probably 15 or 16. Cuz growing I I like Batman stuff, but I didn't read any of the comics. My dad got me a subscription to Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate Fantastic 4 for my birthday one year. So those were my comics. I didn't start branching out until I really got into high school mm -hmm. because I got made fun of a lot for reading comics in school. And, you know, I got bullied, so I stopped reading them for a bit. And I came back, and my favorite Batman comic is Death in the Family mm -hmm. from the Very 80s much. with Jason Todd's death because, I mean, that is it, it is a great comic. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the older, like, art styles I just can't get into anymore. I tried rereading re it, and I was just like, I can't do it. I, I don't like the the art and the coloring in it where I'm used to the newer art styles. Yeah, it's that like really light colors. Like, mm -hmm. A lot of yellow, a lot of blue, a lot of black. Um, and a lot of 2D, not really 3D characters. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very it's a very it's a very like very early early 80s, late 70s look. Yeah. Um, Even some of the 90s now. stuff I can't do. Yeah. And I'll be honest there, I just can't do it. Like, I tried reading a um, Todd McFarlane Spider-Man the other day. And I was like, this is a struggle. I can't get past the art style on it. That's because it's fucking Todd. Fuck Todd McFarlane. I want that whoa, on podcast whoa, whoa. through my voice. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Todd McFarlane. I own... Uh, uh, you can't see it here. You can probably see it over there. If you see that. You, see, you can't see it. Damn. There's a Todd McFarlane Batman... Looking down on me right now, okay? I have a the first issue. I've had bad personal experiences with Todd McFarlane. I want that on oh, record. He, I heard he, okay. I heard he's an asshole in real life, but no, he's, his he's art horrible. is something else. My my friend went to a convention and got me a. Uh, he took his issue number one of Spawn and um, got it signed for me as a going away gift when I was moving from Indiana to Colorado. So that's why I was. That's that like holds a sentimental value in my you know a special place and i like spawn i've never met him so i can't say i have a personal um experience with him okay like uh like ryan which ryan i'm sorry you had to deal with that i've i've met a few famous people and i had a, a negative experience with one person and i just because i heard he was kind of an asshole to begin with who's the one person uh nolan north actually <laughs> nolan north really that's upsetting I've seen, I've he was at Indie uh, PopCon 2016. I think that was it. And he was just kind of like stuck upish and everything. I was like, eh, kind of a dick. I like your voice acting. Don't get me wrong, but you're kind of a dick. Oh, that's upsetting. But I, I also met Tara Strong at that convention, and she is an absolute oh, gift. Lovely person. Lovely Such person. a lovely person. I met Stan Lee, and it was a very... I'm jealous. It's a very, I mean, it was okay. I spent $200 meet Stan Lee, and he kind of rushed it a little bit. Well, he is a very popular person. He is the father of Marvel, so I, I would give it. It was I would more understand. like, it was more like, get in line. Okay, take this picture. All right, please go. Like, okay. Well, I, I spent the man is very old, okay? Can you, can you, he, he's yeah. very old. Well, yeah.
It was before he died, so. Yeah, so. Okay. Him some slack. They should, him they some should slack. have not had him going to cons then. Yeah. Yeah. I just stopped that 10 Well, maybe ago. it was his choice. Maybe he wanted to. Maybe. I mean, so his best cameo was Mallrats, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk my Todd McFarlane story since I have time here. Where okay, it was him so. and Greg Capullo doing a or uh, doing a thing because it was the 20th anniversary of Spawn, and Greg did a cover for it. And the person in front of me mm-hmm. had a Court of Owls issue one, which actually now is worth a bit of money, to get signed by Greg, and they have Spawn issue one. So he gets his Spawn issue one down, and he's passing his Court of Owls to Greg. And Todd just grabs it and signs it in bright blue Sharpie across a thing oh. he's never touched. Oh. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell. And the guy, and then Todd's like, oh, thank you, dude. And then he just passes the comic book off. And I've never seen a man that mad in my life. Get fucked. <laughs> Ooh, okay, that, that, that would piss me off. So Yeah. I mean, it, it, I don't know if there's like an unwritten rule about it at conventions, but I don't think you're, I don't think you really. Like, if someone's, like, dual booting like that, you don't necessarily bring one book for one person and leave the other one kind of in the No, air. because you got a dual thing, like, for them. Like, they gave you for free. Oh, it was a and free then you could bring five. Yeah, you could bring five books for each oh, person. Generous. And then you got that's one generous. free poster of Spawn, and only the first 200 people in the door got this, or, like, 100 people. I don't remember. I but it was, like, a poster of Spawn... And then it was done by Greg Capullo, and that got signed by both of them. He could bring five books for each of them. Yeah, Capullo is honestly the coolest, per- like one of the coolest artists I've ever dealt with in my life. He, He's awesome. He the, back at C two E two, I actually have right here uh, a signed copy. Ooh, of, uh, I have, great. I have, I have the whole run. There's a. How much you want for art. it? This is Endgame art because all the parts of Endgame. Is that New Fifty Two or? Yeah, so this is Endgame. Yeah. They're signed. And Ooh. signa like authenticated signatures. How much you want? Um, well, these go for about two hundred fifty bucks. All right, so because this is signed by Greg Capullo can, and Scott Snyder, and best I can give you is fifty bucks. And this hold is on, right let, me, uh, let me check <laughs> This my is Batman fighting here. the Justice League in this book. You didn't answer my question. Yeah. The best I can do is fifty bucks. So uh, that's about that'll um, cover I the cost of me sending answer. it to the CGC. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I, I need someone God, to hold the uh, I have three dollars gift for Patrick up because that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's he he at, back at C two E two, uh, we were in line for almost like five hours to meet meet Snyder and uh, and Capullo. This is before um this is after Endgame, but before Afterburner. Uh, I believe it was called Afterburner okay. that arc when when Jim Gordon becomes yeah, it was. Batman. So um, yeah, that's Afterburner. Yeah, yeah, so they 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 even came up in line. They like they knew everybody was waiting for a while. They came up to the line. They talked to everybody, gave everybody hugs, and like shook everybody's hand. Uh, there, there's there. Those two are by far the my favorite things to ever come out of DC. They're they're a match made in heaven. And even watching them in a panel was amazing. They're honestly, I will say this ahead of time. They're uh, Scott Snyder is the best Snyder, hands down. Interesting. Oh, so his, been... his writing is really good. Oh, Ryan. fantastic. Go uh, I was at a con, and they were doing a panel, and a fire alarm went off because there was, like, a kitchen in the, like, a food court, and the dude had oil fire. Oh, fuck. So everyone had to be evacuated during this panel slash meeting. Week. They did it outside, the whole panel, with, like, a group of people, and then signed it and took yeah. photos. Some of the Hell nicest yeah. dudes Fucking I ever met. Yeah, they, they love what they do, and, it was like and they love the fans. Eight o'clock, and then everyone just went and got burgers with them. It was fantastic. So, um, I do want to get back to what Ryan was asking. Uh, how do we think this movie is going to play out these four hours? Um, Richie, thank you for answering. Ryan, how do you think? I think play out? along with Richie that it is going to be, a, I think a good quarter of it is going to be Omega shit with Darkseid on his planet, showing him doing getting his memento, all that. Why is he doing this? What's up with the Omega... Explain Omega to people, basically. I also think a part of it, I think 20 to 40 minutes is going to be just Batman. Doing yeah. Batman shit. Where it explains what happened to that Robin. We're probably going to see the scene of that Robin's death. They have which said... I really hope we do. Yeah. Do... And... 
maybe give 10 minutes each to every other hero to just flesh out. I know there's a lot of cyborg film that they didn't use. Yeah. So hopefully we get more of that, because I think of all the characters in that movie, the one that felt the weakest to me was Cyborg. Was Cyborg. He, I'm like, why are you here? I I, I kind of get it. You are you're you're really smart and can understand the boxes a little bit, but like your motive, you, I saw the, your father or doc or the professor die, and that's it's, all it's, I know yeah. about you. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's his dad, right? Yeah. Well, and his dad doesn't um, die in the original cut either, which is kind of like in the trailer. You're definitely like, oh, he's gonna die. And every time I think of uh, Victor Stone, I I put his dad dies. Yeah, in some sort of is accident. his dad not dead? Not in the original no. cut. No, his his dad always dies. That's like why one of the cyborg things is he doesn't have anyone. Yeah, I thought that was like, the, was like the, the Titans are his family because of that and everything. Mm-hmm. I and thought they killed him. Oh my no, god, you're it, right. Stephen Wolf's about to kill his dad, and that's when he comes into play. And then that's when the whole first fight between Stephen Wolf and what our Justice League before Aquaman shows up, or right as actually Aquaman shows up. Yeah. Is a thing. Like it's just but I I wanna say that um and one of the shots in the trailer that's really, really making me curious is if we're going to get more of the nightmare scene. Yeah. Because it shows like the Hall of Justice and then the Joker card flying across and everything. So I'm wondering if we're going back to the um, that version of that nightmare because they, my buddy Noah actually sent me a message saying that the reason Batman is wearing the suit he is in that scene is because it gets destroyed in the fight with Steppenwolf. His tech suit is what he's wearing in the um, nightmare scene. Yeah. What 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 suit is he he's wearing? He's got the coat over that, it. That's it's the coat. The right? the original like suit is the, uh, the tech suit. The one, where it's got the goggles and everything. They it pretty much gets, it pretty much gets destroyed. And that's oh, the yeah, suit yeah, he yeah. uses in the apocalypse version. Yeah. Um, so okay. how I thought this movie is going to go is we're going to spend at least a quarter of it with nightmare stuff. Um, I'm seeing reports that they have said that Deathstroke, you will see a nightmare Deathstroke, which I'm all in that, for. There's, there's a picture. I'll send it to the group chat. Yeah. Or I can hold it up if you want. Um, my no, I saw the picture. I saw the picture. Okay. Oh, so good. So good. It's, uh, um, Who's Joe cast Manganel. as Deathstroke? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh, look shit. at that. Yeah. Look at oh, that. That is yeah. like honestly that reminds me of the um almost kind of like a flashpoint version of Deathstroke and I'm just like I need this. I when they announced that he was casted, I was bit. excited. When I saw him at the like the after credit scene in the original cut, I was just like holy shit, he looks good. Yeah. Like and Manu Bennett is probably my favorite live action Deathstroke. I didn't really care for the Titans version, but Manu Bennett on Arrow was amazing. So I was kind of like disappointed that we're not getting him or Stephen Amell in this version of Justice League, but it also keeps the whole separation. Yeah, yeah. But Joe looks fucking fantastic, and he fills the role. Yep. I mean, my boy Flash Thompson up here, you know, with two swords on his back. Let's go. <laughs> Never forget. Never forget. Wait, does he have two swords? Yeah. Why does yeah. he have two swords? Because he's fucking Deathstroke. Why? Why not? When has Deathstroke ever had two swords? You That's stab him and the other swords. one. You still gotta gotta what get it? your sword, sword breaks. You gotta be over prepared. Look at three different statues of Deathstroke. He's never had two swords. He only has one. I'm pretty sure Death. Doesn't the Injustice version have two no. swords? Is yes. Oh, in this in the in this screenshot, he only has one sword. No, he only okay, has one so sword. He, it's usually like a real. It's it's a sword made of made of uh some some fucking nith metal. I think it's called. It's a, like mm-hmm. a nith metal sword. Yeah, 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 he only has one. It's, yeah. it's on his back. He's or got it's a multiple. katana. He's got he's got a. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. So, we got cut off there uh, for a bit. Uh, Craig decided to go rogue. Um, Damn it, Craig. Where were we? I believe I was talking about. You were what? talking about the nightmare. How it's going to be like a quarter yeah. of it. Yeah, so I think that the nightmare stuff is going to go pretty heavy on it just because they introduced Deathstroke, uh, Deathstroke's nightmare version. So I feel like, yeah, this is going to 
pray this is going to play an, a, a big part in this movie. I also think that um, reviving Superman will not take place up until like once Superman is revived. Uh, at like you said, Richie, at the end of three. So oh, part two. no, yeah, that's what I meant. At the end of part two, and then one hour is just going to be him going rogue as. Uh, Superman in the black suit, and then it's going to be them kicking ass, all well, kicking Darkseid's ass in the fourth part. So I was going to say they're fighting Seven Wolf, so I think we're still going to get that fight because in the trailer it even shows him getting the uppercut right at that perfect moment in Hallelujah, which is Zack Snyder uses that song way too much, and I'm I'm not complaining about it because it just <laughs> well, I mean, it, yeah, Jesus. It, yeah, <laughs> we, we've already established that Snyder loves Jesus. Well, so I think like that fight is going to be the end of three uh, part three. It's that's where it's going to cut off. And then they're going to Apocalypse Omega, whatever it's called. And then they are going to whoop Darkseid's ass or get their asses handed to him. I don't care what happens. I just need that fight in my life. So I do think that they will fight Steppenwolf uh, while Superman is being uh, revived, and so like the first fight. Yeah, the first it would be the first. Uh, let's say the first half of the movie. Okay. Um, and then Green Lantern is going to pop up in this movie. Which brings me back to Green Lantern. I want to talk about this for a I, second. I, I didn't know Green earlier. Lantern is bringing back. It's, yeah, I, it's definitely Ryan Reynolds has already stated he is going to show up at some point in the Snyder Cut, and Zack Snyder has confirmed it on Twitter. Yeah, so it's going to happen. So it's. I think that's an think original thing, a, though. I yes, don't. I definitely yeah. think that he. Do you think that oh, happened yeah. in the original cut? I believe that he plans to do it. I don't think that no, happened. No, 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 no. He wasn't working I, for Disney. It didn't happen. And he's still not working for Disney, so he can do this. Yes, but do you really like I believe realistically, that... do you think do you think Snyder got Reynolds into the studio and said, Hey, let's shoot this? Oh, before I don't think the, it's Reynolds. Before before the Snyder cut. Oh, I think it's I don't Reynolds. Think it's, no, I don't think it's Reynolds. I don't think, I it's, think Reynolds it's Reynolds either. There's no way Reynolds is coming back as Hal Jordan. He hates that role. I think that he, he hated, will have he a he didn't hate the role. He made a whole part of the of Deadpool where of he Deadpool. shoots himself for taking that role. <laughs> exactly. He didn't, the movie. he didn't hate Hal Jordan's character. He actually likes Hal Jordan, and I thought he fit the role perfectly. But I don't think it's going to be Hal Jordan. Yeah. I think he's going to be Hal John Jordan. Stewart. I think John it's going to be John Stewart, yeah. It's going to be John Stewart. John Stewart is going to well, show up. I was speculating that he was going to be Hawkman, and I was like, nah, there's no way they're going to get Ryan Reynolds as Hawk. Nah, John it's Stewart true. is going to show up, and I, I say John Stewart's going to show up to disable uh superman like to i guess to help, you know like make sure him? i don't, think, I don't yeah, think it's gonna be all that so hold him you know just to make sure that they get rid of the black suit or get rid of dark he's gonna have that suit like this straight like rain oh, and then just like hold him out think so. or something yeah. oh it's it's shown where they're standing at the end like in the chernobyl area and then going onto the thing he's he has the black suit on in the trailer yeah, he's gonna have that black suit for the rest of the movie. Well, again, I, I think it's just to like hold him down, just to get rid of Darkseid's like control over him. Well, the black suit it doesn't necessarily go for his um, like being controlled. It's his Godfall suit. It's where he's coming back. Yeah, no, no, I get that, but what I'm I, I, I believe that I believe that Darkseid is here for a reason, and that he will take over Superman in this movie. Okay, how he I'll does it. Up. How he does it, I don't know, but I, I, I it think will happen. Because there's there's also been speculation because someone um, has leaked it that um, the whoa, general... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. No, we're not talking leaks here, all right? We're talking leaks here. No. It, I, I think it was leaks? actually confirmed. Let me, let me go back to Twitter and check really quickly. But don't, to don't back... confirm it. I'm not confirming. It's still, if it's, a spoiler, yeah, if it's confirmed, don't we don't, I don't want to know. Yeah. If it's a spoiler, it the then... actor... Who said something? What's on? It was. The, it's another right? character showing up. And no, nah, I don't want to know. Don't say yeah. it. Okay. All right. Okay. Keep All right. it up for surprise. If someone yeah. wants to know, they can message me, and I will tell them. Okay. But it has to do with the character we've already seen. Oh, uh, oh. No, I, I, I know what you're talking about. Saying. It's, it's already too much. No, no we, we, Ruben, we already talked about this. Okay. Martian Manhunter. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, the general. Yeah, yeah the yeah, general yeah. in Man of Steel is actually John Johns. Yeah, but doesn't he die? And, yeah. No. 
I don't know about that. I feel like that was Listen, another retroactive, like, we're going to put he, that in If afterward. people are killing gonna, James Olsen... Oh, we're going to see him killing, now. Nah, if we're killing Jimmy Olsen, there's no way that this guy is surviving. John Jones? No, no it, John Jones is showing up. The nah, general um, shows up in um, Man of Steel, or in Batman v Superman as well, because he gives the stuff to Lois Lane. Yeah. It's uh, that guy. Uh, it's yeah. not the general that goes down with the ship. It's not okay, that. General. Okay, 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 okay. Right. He's like a captain or a sergeant or something. He's not the general. I'm talking to like the actual the, the uh, general. United States general. Yes, the guy who's there with uh, Lois. He's like, we could arrest you, and he goes, you can try. Yeah. Okay. No. That guy. He's he's Martian Manhunter. It's been confirmed that he is Martian Manhunter. Okay. Yeah. Frank. So. Yeah. Sorry, Richard. Hello. Uh, Hello? Oh, you're- Frank, what do you think this movie is going to like? How, how do you think this movie is going to play out? I don't think I think we're all blowing it way out of proportion. Though, how much is going to be actually added into this movie? Um, I think it's going to be an, an extra hour or 30 minutes of just straight fan service. Just we're just going to throw some fan service in there. Maybe even less than that, because I do believe that they're just going to take the scene where you remember that scene where they where they talk about the war on dark side. Dark Side's planet. I don't. I don't yeah, think, yeah, You know, that part that you see in the trailer is literally just that part where you see Dark Side with the hammer and shit. Mm-hmm. That's literally just that part. Which I think they're just going to extend that part maybe to like a, a few hours, maybe not not a few hours, but a few more minutes. Maybe even elongate it and add some actual context to it, other than just the Green Lantern reference, the Shazam reference, and all that. Um, but I thought that was a, a fight on um, the Amazonians. It's when the Amazonians, the Atlanteans. Oh yeah, yeah. Then it's the it's just gonna be that fight though, is what I think. It's just gonna be that fight, just extended and added some context with Dark Side in it. Um, there's gonna be some Batman scenes, unfortunately, because it's not. That's the thing is the thing is I don't want there to be more Batman scenes. You had your chance with Batman vs Superman to add Batman scenes. This is not his movie. This is the Justice League movie. You know what I mean? Like I want to see more of the other characters. I already know who Batman is in this universe. I already know what what what's happening. I want to see more of the Flash. I want to see more of. Aquaman. I want to see more of Victor. I want to see more of apparently Martian Manhunter now. Um, I want to see more of those characters get flushed out, not Batman. We already know who Batman is. We already know who Superman is. We don't need more context with those characters. Yeah. But okay. um, I'm like, like I said, I'm very skeptical on what exactly was shot in this movie and what exactly is getting reshot. The thing is, Deathstroke, I can tell you right now, was supposed to be in this movie already. There, yeah, was already fo- there was footage way, way back when mm-hmm. when he was confirmed to be in this movie. So the Deathstroke yeah, scenes, awesome. scenes make sense. The other stuff doesn't. Like, the Martian Manhunter stuff doesn't... It, it feels like more of, like, a Snyder retcon. Like, oh, we're, I'm adding this in nah, retroactively. I don't think that. Um, I don't think so. Back in the I think original he's set it up already. In the, in the original promotions, it was Unite the Seven. Yeah. yeah. We only have six in the movie. Mm-hmm. Who's the seventh? Either the Green Lantern, which could have been could could have been. I, it's in. either going to be Hal or or it's going to be one of the Lanterns or it's going to be Martian Manhunter. One of the yeah. two is supposed to show up for the league. I mean, if you were a big budget company, who would you add in? Because I wouldn't Green add in Martian Manhunter. Nobody really knows who Martian Manhunter is like, unless you unless Green you've Lantern. watched the OG Justice League cartoons. You probably don't know who Martian Manhunter is. Which a lot yeah. of the and a lot of the fans watch that because I mean it did premiere on the what the fifteenth anniversary. Of Justice League, I believe so. Premiere. It was one of the anniversary. I can't remember the, the animation, the animated yeah. show from like the early two thousands. Yeah, uh, the one that premiered on Cartoon Network. It, the Justice League we got premiered on like the anniversary of that. Yeah, it was like the fifteenth or the sixteenth anniversary. Oh, that was good. Yeah, that was a great TV show. But I don't, I don't think there's going to be too much more added to this movie. In terms of like, there, there's rumors that there's like 90 minutes of like Jared Leto for this movie. It's like, why nah. would, I can see why. For Suicide Squad. Yeah, well, I mean that too. It's just like, why would you do? Why would you even do all that? No, it's, shovel it's, that in, it's, again, it's just shovel four it. minutes of added footage. Yeah, shovel as much as you can into this movie. Like, I can understand why Snyder was kind of taken off the project if he was doing that much for a movie that was only supposed to be originally two hours long. He, well, I mean, Snyder was. Yeah. Well, no, he was taken they out, were, obviously, but... No, nah, he stepped down, but they were originally going to fire him from the movie. Yeah, because just look at the look at the response to all the movies that he's made so far. Like, it doesn't... It doesn't add up. Yeah. I like 300. 300 I don't like okay. the second one. Doesn't I doesn't like, like 300. I like the first one. I did not care for Rise of the Empire or whatever it's called. 
I, I think, think Snyder he... uses slow motion way too much in his movies. And he, he, does, he, does, he does. He does. He does. Yeah. He does. He he. It's his slow motion in... is what Michael Bay's. Um... Yeah. Uh, then... Question for you is: Are gods perfect? No, they're not. Okay. So gods are not perfect. <laughs> we get what do we get? You know. No gods, no monsters. No. Um. No. It's a. Uh... I don't, I don't, and then if you look at Watchmen, like, Watchmen, as much as I technically do like it, I don't like how Snyder, I don't like the idea of Watchmen, of be, of using Watchmen at all, because if you know, if you know the history of Watchmen and how DC is treated Alan Moore with Watchmen, if you co- go on any media, if you're Snyder or if you're the, or if the guy who wrote Lost, Whatever the hell his name was, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, as good uh, as the yeah. Watchmen TV show is, how dare you go on anything and say that you're a Alan Moore fan, but make something Watchmen related, knowing how badly Watchmen has treated Alan Moore? You know what I mean? WB like, has the, treated w, Alan Moore. WB has fucked over Alan Moore in his Watchmen media for so long. So to hear Snyder go, oh well, I'm a big Watchmen fan, and then go on to say, well, Watchmen is uh, what? What, what did you say? Watchmen is a uh, Watchmen is satire. It's like you don't understand what these books are supposed to be, my guy. Like, and, and it's very apparent with the with that, and then seeing Batman vs Superman. That's why WB wanted him out because it's like, dude, you're, you're you're like people like your stories, and, and I get it. Some people really do like Batman vs Superman for what it is, and it's gonna it's gonna happen um, because some people really like that rendition of Batman being who he is in that movie, and people like the rendition of Superman just not being a campy person. But if you're gonna if you're gonna go into media and say how much of a big fan you are of these books, but then bastardize it, it just doesn't make any sense to me how you can be a big fan of those books. Well, I, I, I oh go ahead, Brian, go ahead. As someone who I am usually a fan of Scott Snyder's works, the one that I do agree with you in that one is what he did to Watchmen, what he said about Watchmen, and all that. Because Watchmen. The thing that got me into comic books, got me into all that, one, I grew up a little bit. And I remember that movie being good, but then all that stuff, I mean, I do remember all this, to where he wanted the Watchmen to be basically what the boys is, mm-hmm. not what the actual yeah. Watchmen is. And I feel like he then kind of just stopped going for source material, other than for just names and ideas. Because when you look at Batman v Superman and all basically his whole dc run it is basically his own story of events that have happened in the comics that have been told a few different ways this this is his way of telling it all we've had yes batman fights superman in the dark knight but in the dark knight returns but here we're going to do it a little differently we're going to do this a little differently my only problem with what he's done with the DC universe, because I, he did what he did to Superman. That movie's not good. His character of Superman is good. The only thing I feel like he's fucked up royally in these is Doomsday. I fucking hate Doomsday and oh. Batman v Superman. And Doomsday yeah, is my, boy one of my favorite a villains. <laughs> yeah, Doomsday yeah. is. Uh, was... I completely forgot about Doom. That's how forgettable Doomsday oh. is in that movie. I completely yeah. forgot Doomsday was in that movie. <laughs> Really bad. The, the, I'm not the gonna man lie. Who killed Superman? The the most powerful monster in the DC universe that isn't like dark side, like God tier, is fucking Doomsday, and they made him this weird flesh mob with none of his like fucking like spikes or anything. Well, he evolved. Horrible. through... I, I'm not. I'm not trying to say that Doomsday was <laughs> good in Batman v Superman because that was probably the worst part of the movie. But like, as Doomsday's taking damage and evolves and everything, and he starts to show up as more classic doomsday it yeah it wasn't good it was not good but like (laughs) when clark picks up the spear and starts shoving it at doomsday and like takes the spike through him i was like holy fuck they actually went there they're Mm -hmm. doing the death of superman he's doing his version of the death of superman but they're doing the death of superman yeah and they did and they did and but right that's i think now I want to get into fears of the Snyder Cut, because we're getting around that now, which is that I think Snyder is great when it comes to heroes. I think he can capture what is Batman, what is Superman, and even what, what his Wonder Woman is in that, which then got later fleshed out by other people, but what Wonder Woman is. I think he's done a great job with the hero parts. 
I think he has misstepped every villain he's ever had. Yeah, Lex in these is... movies, Zod, Lex is shit. Zod is shit. Doomsday is a barely a villain, and more of this is like a world problem. Like he has no motives. I think he's just a big monster. Yeah. Like you don't get the origin story of what a regular Doomsday is and all that. To now we're going into Darkseid, which is a complicated character, a Thanos level character, for lack of a better. Yeah, hey, is he really that comic? Oh no, he's powerful. He's no, is he really he that is, complicated? He is, he is a he is, omega he was, level. He has a very he's, he's he has a, a very he got bodied and all this and had to grow up in the Omega world where he is basically. It's a war zone, basically. He grew He's up in a war zone. basically a god in that world, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, Dark is he Side really is... that complicated? No, Darkseid is complicated. complicated. He can be. Complicated, yeah, I think motive. he can be. Uh, people have done it. Com- people have done him complicated before. But more along the lines of that is he is a high power, monstrous threat. And I don't want to see another Snyder villain get dropped down and ruin another Snyder movie where I think it could be good, because mm-hmm. Steppenwolf had no personality, and I hope at least Darkseid has some personality. Yeah. Well, Steppenwolf is the war general. He's, you know, Darkseid's right man, uh, right-hand man, mm-hmm. and his oh, uncle. Really? Yeah, Steppenwolf is yeah. one of uh, Darkseid's right-hand men. Why did I think that Steppenwolf mm-hmm. in Justice League... Uh, was betraying him. Am it I felt wrong? like it. It did feel like it. At oh, he was point, definitely taking I don't, up like, I don't... his own mantle. Yeah, yeah, where he was like, oh, I'm gonna do this so that Darkseid can go kick rocks. Am I wrong? <laughs> go kick rocks. Go kick rocks. It, it, it's it's all little words. Darkseid's version of kicking rocks is just kicking a planet. Yeah. He shoves his foot into the earth and boom. Where's, where's my anti-life equation? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a nice background there, sir. I saw I saw that background. Oh, for Batman? You yeah. That? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. under the red hood. It's under the red hood. I you meant the PlayStation my... 5 being on. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, but it's yeah. under the red hood. It's my, it's, it's my boy Jason Todd, so. I made my own red hood mask. That did that? Okay, okay. we're going to have to talk it, about that later. But it still. glows. Um, oh, it's supposed to. Darkseid in the <laughs> Justice League, I think, is different than what originally we we're supposed to get. I mean, visually, he looked like shit in the original, and he looks so much better than what he did in in the new version. He looks a lot better. Yeah. Um. And I think that, like, I a lot of the movie was re. They, I think, they said ninety percent of the movie was, you know, reshoots and rewrites. For the Justice League I, 2017, yeah. Which, yeah, I know Josh did a lot, was given a lot of money and a lot of time to fix that movie for what they thought it was, and it was bad. Yeah, it was really bad. Yeah, I, that's honestly a dumpster fire. And then keep in mind, I'm not blaming Snyder on 100% of Justice League because huh. there's only so much somebody can do when you're being rushed by a company full of old board people who just want money to to roll in. You know what I mean? They want that Marvel money to start who, happening. Who was the president at the time? Was it Geoff Jones? It's not I don't think it was Je- uh um No Jeff Jones was uh Jeff Jones. Jeff, Jeff Jones. Yeah. I always pronounce Jeff it wrong, John. but Jeff Jones. Um, yeah Jeff Jones way pronounced it was two years ago because I just got a, a Facebook notification the other day about <laughs> me seeing it with my girlfriend at the time. I'm um, I'm pretty sure Jeff Johns was the head of uh, DC After f- movies. D- yeah, DC, DC films. films right? Yes, yeah, because Jeff- he's no longer there. Correct. Jeff doesn't. Yeah, Jim want Lee, that. I believe, is heading heading DC right now. Because whoever's yeah, there now, that. I went and um, like went back to Zach and you know was asking Zach, "Okay, we need you to come back. Please come back." And because we're getting Zach back, I think there's the chance that, you know, we'll possibly get um, Ben Affleck back in the role of Batman. Well, I mean, he is playing Batman, Batman in yeah. the Flashpoint movie. Yeah, he, he's, he's going to be I know, I know that. Batman. I know that, but I think we'll get the original, what his Batman film was going to be. Not the Matt Reeves film, which I'm still excited for. I don't think so. But I think we'll get his Batman v Deathstroke movie. At some point, or at least an HBO Max series. I think it was too much for for 
Oh, ben Affleck. Yeah. yeah. He, you can obviously tell during like Justice League, like during the interviews, he just wasn't. Yeah. Like, no, it was too much for him. Like it took a mental toll on him, and he went back to alcohol. So I don't think <laughs> he became the liquor again. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. He literally, yeah, I know, I know. He literally went back to alcohol. I, 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 I will say that his stab at um, Warner Brothers, kind of in the Jane Silent Bob reboot, was was hilarious. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying it's not necessarily all Snyder's fault. No. Um, I'm sure Snyder had some ideas. And it's not and all Joss's fault. It's not all Joss's mm-hmm. fault either. Because again, think like put yourself in Joss's boots here. Yeah. If you're coming onto a project that late and you have that little time to put a put something out in theaters, you're gonna have some fuck ups there. Yeah. And it's just a and given. it's but it's like two differentiating yeah. two differentiating ooh, excuse me differentiating views of how you want a movie to go. Yeah, and it's yeah, like. Different. Is that Zach does a very got... dark tone. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then Joss does, you know, like you said, the Avengers. He, yeah, I mean, he did. Fun. How many yeah. Avenger movies did he actually do? Two. 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 He didn't do any of the other Marvel movies before? No, he oh, left after that. Oh, I thought he did one of the yeah. Iron Mans or Thor movies. Oh, he, he no. did. Didn't he do. Iron Man 1 was. Uh... I know Avengers Kenneth Branagh Avengers did uh, Thor. He did, no, no. It was just the Avengers movies. It was just Avengers. Was it just Avengers and, and Age of Ultron? Age of Ultron. Here, at least. Okay. He was he was signed on as a producer for all of them, though. Okay. Yeah. I knew he had some involvement with pretty much every Marvel movie up until the point of, um, Age of, after Age of Ultron. Yeah. So, and then he went to DC because didn't they have him signed on for uh, producing or helping with Wonder Woman as well? No. Correct me if I'm wrong. No. I, I thought like... he had some involvement with Wonder Woman. I thought I I thought I remember reading an article about where he had some involvement with the Wonder Woman film. Uh, look um, it up. I don't see it here, yeah. but uh it says here that he served as a producer or served as co, uh, co he wrote the co-script for Justice League and served as a director for reshoot, reshoots during Justice League as well. But yeah. I don't see anything else here about that. No, he he co-wrote uh, original Wonder Woman script. It wasn't. Original. He didn't write this. Yeah. This okay. Wasn't... All right, guys. I knew there was. I knew there was some involvement there, but I didn't remember how what the ties were completely. Because a lot of shit has come out in the past few years yeah. with like different stories and different things. Like is Henry Cavill out of Superman? All this bullshit. Yes, he is. Uh, but he, he needs to stay. He needs to stay. Yeah, Henry oh, Cavill himself is is a great Superman. Like in terms of the embodiment, he, ha- he has he has a great look for Superman. Yeah, yes, he has a great yes. look of Superman. He does. But unfortunately, and I'm still ninety percent sure that that is Henry Cavill in the Superman suit at the end of Shazam. No, it's and not. They just didn't show his face. And no. They're like, it's too much money. I'm... Why would they not show his face? Too much money. <laughs> it's too much money. No, that's not Henry Cavill. I don't think no, it's not. Damn. Um, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Um, I will give a, an allotted two minutes of closing arguments. Let's start with Richie. closing arguments. Closing arguments. <laughs> yeah, this I don't debate. know what to argue. Are we debating? Well, do you think that this is going to be a good movie? I think so. Yes. Okay. And if my hopes get crushed and you know thrown into the gutter and fucking stomped on. So be it. Uh, I'll I'll die on the hill. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> Ryan, do you think this is going to be a good film? I am right next to you on that hill, Richie. I believe this is going to be a fantastic film. Frank, um, do you think this is going to be a good movie? I'll be honest with you. Even though I hate uh, Snyder with a passion, I think there's too much at stake here for him to fuck it up, and I think he knows that. At this point, so he's not gonna. I don't think he's gonna do anything too crazy, uh, but I'm my hopes for it are way like down here because I I've got I got hype for Batman vs Superman. I got hype for Justice League. I was like, there's no way they can fuck this up twice. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But, okay. Uh, my I, if you keep your expectations down here, you might be surprised when there when when it ends up being up here. Well, it's too and, late, my and, friend, because my expectations are sky fucking high. Yeah, and I can't fucking. Yeah. Wait. that's the other thing. That's the other Welcome. thing about people who love Snyder movies. Even if they are bad, it's still good. Let's be real here. 
Like, yeah, even I if they are bad, they I even good. said earlier that Sucker Punch was a bad film. Yeah, I mean, I mean I've, I've, I've never met a person like who said people who Sucker like Punch. Like films like <laughs> I've met one person that said Sucker Punch was a good film, and they that's because they're a back coomer. Home. They love they love the hot chicks in it. Yeah, I love the hot chicks in it, but I can still say it's a bad movie. Okay, I, I don't know if that Emily it's... Browning is that is that her name? She was uh, um, the older sibling in the mm-hmm. original Lemony Snicket film. She That's was in it. I was like, "Whoo!" I had a crush on her back in the fourth grade, and I have a crush on her now. Still, holy hell, let's go! <laughs> and that when I ended her film career. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, she and did she that really bad seen Sleeping again. Beauty movie, too. Hey, where has she, like she a... ever been seen again? Am I wrong? Is it, is it yes, Browning? actually, she did an indie film that was called Sleeping Beauty where she was a prostitute. Indie film doesn't was... count. Indie film doesn't count. Oh, no, count. this movie's fucked up. This is, uh, indie movies, movie movies don't count. Fucked up. Yeah, indie movies don't count. Oh, yeah, it's still movie, a movie. Her, 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 her career ended a long time ago. Uh, I, after <laughs> this movie. <laughs> <in> her, <laughs> her career is ended. Sleeping Beauty yeah. came out in 2011, I think. So, and Sucker Punch was 2010, 2009? Oh, okay. no way. I wish, I, like, it was one of those times I wish Mario was here so I could fucking ask him because he knows like every movie possible. I used you to could, be that way, and just, then I fell off. You just up. throw an actress or an actor out, he'd be like, I saw her in this. Like, okay, Sucker cool. Punch was 2011. Thanks, man, for... 2011, okay. Sucker Punch was 2011. Yeah. When the hell was he... Sleeping Beauty coming out? Well, Richie, while well, you look that up, Ryan, where can people find you? People can find me at on Twitter at RyanTheLion3055 for whatever hot takes I got that day. Mm, okay. Gotta be uh, adding you right now. Sweet. Richie, where could people find you? Uh, probably just on Twitter at SpideyFanboy95. Okay. And you could see all his hot takes about Christopher Nolan there. <laughs> Dude, I did one bad the other day. I lost followers for it. Oh, I mean, really? I would too. I would have. I, I would have unfollowed you. You didn't see it, Christopher. I, 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 I don't. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Oh, okay. I'm gonna send it to you now. Okay. No, God. <laughs> Frank, where could people find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter as uh, Venom Unfit Snake. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch. I stream sometimes. Venom Unfit Snake. Uh, please, actually follow me. I'm eating beans out here. I do have a can of beans right in here. I okay. Do. I'm eating beans. Please. Um, if you actually. Well, they at least the bushes. Hot, it's bush beans. Yeah, actually, it's, it's <laughs> baked beans, original, original flavor. Oh, right, you haven't you haven't hit rock bottom yet. You still got bushes baked beans. Is is that like is that like bougie bu- bush? Is that bougie bougie? Beans? You're bougie <laughs> right now. Bougie, bougie beans. Bougie beans? beans. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bushes bougie beans. <laughs> bushes bougie beans. Um, fun fact: If you go on my Twitter, I believe my first tweet was when um Batman vs Superman came out, and I made a Twitter specifically so I can tell Snyder to go fuck himself. Ah, that's oh my god that's unfortunate <laughs> oh boy um you can find me <laughs> at on yeah you can find me on twitter at panel uh at pen conquest uh twitch at penultimate conquest and our new website will be coming up pretty soon the penultimate conquest.com where you can find okay, reviews okay. you can find first impressions and wonder woman 1984 will be coming out December 25th in theaters and on HBO Max for free. So I we will be doing Cheetah. a review for that. Are you, gonna, uh, you want to do a watch party for that? We can do a watch party for that. Yeah, we can, sure. I think we can do a watch party through, through HBO Go now, right? I think they had like a big yeah. advertisement about that. I believe so. Yeah, you can do that. But will it be on HBO Go or just Max exclusive? Because I know I there's some things. Max exclusive. I mean, we can Which always... it's it's literally the same, Richie. So I mean, you could probably like get rid of Go. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, I don't. No, I don't we're... have Go. Okay. Well, well I, I bought um, Bill and Ted earlier, and I got a free 14 day trial for um, HBO Max, and I'm just like, I I already have this. Boom. Okay. Well, I mean, if you don't want it, I'll take it. I'll okay. give it to you. I'll I will okay. send you that shit right now. All right. Cool. We'll do. Sounds good. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk about Snyder Cuts and DC and Justice Leaks and Batman and 
yeah, hot takes. Really hot takes, Richie. I wasn't expecting some steam, that. Some steaming. Dude, hot I takes. told you, you're not gonna want me back after this episode. I mean, Richie, we'll see if we could, if you come back after this. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. You might have to like you know walk, look over your shoulder every now and again. You know yeah, 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 yeah. Well, like uh, we're gonna have to set some guidelines for you. I'm gonna send my address to the. Uh, to the group chat no, right now. You, guys, you, you might have some professionals sent that. after you. That's a, bit, that's a bit much. We don't need that. I just, we're going to need to set some guidelines on things that you can talk about and you can't shit on. Okay. <laughs> oh, so I, I can't say that I have a love hate relationship with no one. I got it. Okay. Okay. You I, I see you. definitely do not. Because no, if you had right seen, now you don't. if you had, no, I'm saying you definitely cannot say that because if you had seen the great, movie tenant you would not be i haven't seen it yet Uh, and that's one thing i'm okay i didn't care for interstellar and i didn't care for dunkirk you're a monster you didn't care for interstellar and i'm matthew mcconaughey i'm sorry i'm sorry sir but you're gonna have to be kicked all right this this, this podcast is over (laughs) this This is it this podcast is over i am (laughs) trying to keep my blood pressure down this is a conversation for the nolan north episode Sure. Nolan North. The Nolan North episode. The Nolan yeah. episode. Yeah. The Nolan episode. Anyone named Nolan? Where we go over Nolan. Nolan. About just in general. <laughs> just all the Nolans. Nolan North. Christopher Nolan. Here, I'm just gonna. I'll just go out and start my own podcast called Shit Talks, and you guys can just <laughs> talk, tell me how shitty my takes are. Oh God, no! Steaming I don't. I don't want to be on that. I don't want to be on that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me getting crucified the entire time. Mm. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you once again. Have a wonderful night. All right, later, homies. Later, later guys. Peace.